Hey, welcome back. Another episode of the Paper Stack Podcast. Trying to roll these things out, keep you guys interested. I hope so. Keep printing in good content. How things going, man? Going fine. I mean, we got a lot of cool things that are going to be happening soon. If you are watching this on Friday, uh, next Wednesday, there should be an email that might be something you want to open. Oh, yes. Are we, uh... Huh? It's... So this will come out after that. No, this will come out before this. this okay, one. next... Yes, so then next Wednesday, there's yeah. uh, just a little... little dab will do you. Using leverage. Yeah, using leverage. A way for you guys to uh, use leverage. We've come across somebody who's doing uh, lending. So if you have, you know, a hundred grand and you'd like to buy five notes, you can use a little leverage with that, and yeah, they'll uh, they'll become your lending partner on buying performing notes and and, yeah, not, performing and non performing. So it's good, good stuff. Yeah, they just basically got to see the what you got. They do their own due diligence on it, so it's a on a note on a transaction basis, not on a they have not a line of credit. So it's a, you know, they look at it go, okay. It's a per transaction deal, kind of like uh, getting hard money for fix and flip. Yep. Perfect. So yeah. that's coming out. Details on the Wednesday email coming to you <laughs> five days. <laughs> five days. Yeah. So, um, so what I want to do now uh, for just the next couple podcasts, uh, if there, cause I don't know if it'll be a snacky snackable type thing would be the different loss mitigation strategies you know we're starting to see a little bit of a pickup of non-performing notes and we just saw some stuff that got purchased that was a lot of non-performing notes which means there's probably going to be more non-performing notes coming to the market yes and if you're not up on loss mitigation strategies uh you might not get the chance to buy some or you could but you better know how to do it and so right. we're going to do a series about loss mitigation strategies, and I don't know which one you want to start with. Um, I guess let's just talk a little bit about loss mitigation strategies. It's interesting. I wanted to know. I know what I th- what what I view it as. It's basically us working with the borrower. But I wanted to see, you know, what what's consumerfinance.gov say? And it says loss mitigation refers to the steps mortgage servicers take to work with a mortgage borrower to avoid foreclosure. Um, It refers to the servicer's responsibilities to reduce or mitigate the loss to the investor that can come with the foreclosure. Um, There's a lot of them out there. Not as really. There's a lot of different. There's a lot of different things. It's like I look at it like there's a. It's a recipe, right? Like you may um, make your your mashed potatoes one way and you may put a little of this in there and a little of that in there and ultimately at the end of the day we we wind up with mashed potatoes at Thanksgiving. Sour cream. Right? Sour, sour cream. Sour, sour cream. cream, okay. Some people do cream cheese, some people do oh. this. I've, I've heard a lot of different ways in there. Whole milk versus half, you know, skim milk versus blue cheese. Blue cheese. So lots of different ways. Um, you know, I think we've got it. We can, make, <laughs> we, we can make mashed potatoes a lot of different ways. But the point is, is there's not there's not one way to get to loss mitigation. You ultimately have to figure out, um, you know, you're looking at a couple different things, at least I do whenever I'm trying to assess how we're gonna do a loss mitigation strategy. For instance, how long has it been since they've paid? Right? Right. Are, you know, are we talking it's been six months and now they're ready to get back on their feet and start paying again? Are we talking it's been you know, two years? Are we talking it's been 10 years or 11 years? I mean, that's that's a whole side question, but wouldn't that involve SOL, statute of limitations? It sure does, statute of limitations. You got to know what it is, but it just so happens that we have one right now in the great state of Michigan, which has a 15-year statute of limitations. 15. So each state's different though, right? Every state's different, and you got to look at it, and there's... um, there's certain things that servicers can do, like advancing the uh, last paid date or advancing how much they're going to collect on. So if it was, you know, to fall inside the statute of limitations. Mm-hmm. So there's some protections that came out specifically here in Florida over, oh, it's been years now, but stuff that they've done that allows um, for a little bit more leniency on there. Mm-hmm. On the That's statute. Yeah. So there's... Is that leniency on whose side? Uh, uh, for the, the lenders. For the lenders. Yeah. So it's important right now because there is a lot more um, defaulted debt coming down the pipeline. Like I said, we're working on one right now that is, um, it's it's 11 years, right? She hasn't made payment in 11 years. Jeez, I mean, I, I, 
So I this would imagine those are really hard. They get, they get used to a certain lifestyle. Well, they do, but I also they know. They right? Know. They know. Yeah, of course they know. Like we we've tried working with this particular borrower, um, 2017, 2018, 2019, and different times, different loss mitigation stuff, and you know, there was a bit, there was something a little bit more evasive at the time by on on them not wanting to commit to paying. Maybe they're upside down on their loan. Well now. That loan has got equity. It's got a bunch of equity. And so you're running into, mm. you have borrowers now who are like, okay, if they haven't paid in a long time, you know, we talked to a borrower this week and she said, I just don't want to lose my house. Now this particular one's got piles of issues with it um, that we're working through um, or we're going to sell it and kind of fully disclose everything. But it's something that we're kind of working through. But there's, you just kind of have to look at how long has it been since they've paid. Because that's going to, for me, drive a couple of different parts of the strategy. Another thing I'm looking at is, what was the reasoning behind them stop paying? Has there been any prior loss mitigation um, strategies attempted? Have you tried to get in contact with? Have you been successful? Have they botched when it came time to send in the loss mitigation package? We can talk a little bit about loss mitigation packages and how those can be a big roadblock or a barrier for some borrowers. Right. Um, and those so, packages are usually pretty thick, right? Yeah, they're very thick. And it, it goes into financials and it goes into stuff that's kind of like, mm, I just don't want to do it. It's like, ugh. Wasn't there that, weren't you, weren't you guys use a duck, what was it called, Buck? Bot Doc? Bot Doc, we did that. They came from a company called Short Save um, that had, which was really good, it was really prevalent. Um, we used it, it was nice. It was a way to, to manage your loss mitigation. Right, so workflows, you had a whole lot of mitigation sort of environment. Um, it was pretty user friendly for the um, for the borrowers. Yeah. So it made the collection of data much easier. And something that spun out of that was called BotDoc, and it's a it's a secure way to share files um, via email back and forth. That's right. It's an encryption thing. So uh, really good company. Uh, we still use it. We still have it. Um, so, but it all, it all kind of wraps up into loss mitigation. Um, most of the time you're going to, you're going to want to have a little bit of a system if you're going to start rolling through multiple of these things, right? But, you know, you want to know what happens, what workflows, when I put something here, how does this, how does it move through the process and what's our final product? And from there you can kind of put in your inputs as far as, you know, for instance, if somebody hasn't made payments in, in you know five or six years, I'm really hoping um, one their balance is gonna the the total payoff is gonna be should be pretty high considered to what they're actually what their principal balance is. So um, you got to look at do they have equity? Even now, is there equity in the property? Do they want to keep this house? Do we want to help them getting it sold? If they want to keep it, then I'm gonna need. I, I need something up front from you. I need a big chunk of money, mm -hmm. right? I need you to put down a considerable amount of money if it's been five or six years because you haven't been making your payment for five or six years. So arguably, you should have had an extra plug in the value available in your income. Uh, if it's been, you know, six months, I'm looking at it going, okay, I still would, I'd love to get some money down. It's obviously not going to be as big a chunk because they're not behind as much. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm looking for a double payment out of them. Like, look, I need, I need you to make, you know, two payments in one right now. And from there we can then roll through the loss mitigation and we can get you, you know, at that point I may just extend the loan or put it on the back end or do something along those lines to, right. to get them paying again. But it's kind of also contingent on, well, what happened? Why did you stop paying? That's a question I have. Like, so let's say <clears throat> two things. The reason the total payoff is higher is because they have arrears, right? Right. Things they owe for late ta late payments, all that stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just for the clarification there. Uh, second part. Um, well, arrearage. Yeah, they, they have been making payments. There's accrued interest. Um, if the, it was an escrowed loan, or even if it wasn't an escrowed loan, um, oftentimes the servitor has to pick up the tax bill mm. because they don't want to let that go um, to a tax deed. Right. So, oh, wow. yeah. Wow, yeah, that's very interesting. So, my, yeah, my second question, though, is when you say you throw it on the back end, 
Is that is that a whole loan restructuring? So the yeah, whole yeah, you, loan, you do a loan mod, put it on the back end. I oftentimes will say, look, we'll restart the loan, or we can. Which is a good thing because that the amortization schedule starts right back up. Yeah, it's front end loaded, so with with interest, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I try to preserve as much principal as possible. I don't like to do principal reductions, and right now, honestly, in today's real estate environment and what's going mm -hmm. on, there's not really a need to do that. Um, Principal reduction meaning you don't you always if they owe a hundred thousand dollars in principal balance, mm -hmm. I don't want to shave principal. A couple of years ago, you did though. That of was, course, that was the strategy well, when yeah, things were kind of underwater. You know, when twenty, you know, twelve through maybe sixteen, seventeen. If you had legacy eighteen, nineteen, you had some legacy stuff in there. You may consider doing a principal reduction f just for the fact that, like, look, if they owe you a hundred and fifty thousand. And the house is worth a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and you try to get them to sign a loan again for a hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, they're like, man. They're like, I'm um, fifty thousand dollars upside down. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So at that time, uh, principal reductions was one of the strategies we used. Yeah. But we did it. Um, we did it in a specific way. Like I would, if I was going to do a principal reduction, I would create a um, like a, a non. Um, a non-interest bearing second with that principal. And if they made payments on time for five years, I automatically would forgive that. Oh, wait, what? So say they say they owed 150. Right. And the principal balance, or that was the principal balance, was 150. The house is worth 100. Right. I would say, look, I need, you know, five grand up front. Okay. And then I'm going to take $45,000 and I'm gonna separate it off your loan. I'm gonna modify this first position. I'm gonna reduce the principal down to 100,000. So that way you're not underwater, but I didn't just give you a bunch of equity. If you make payments over the next five years on time, mm. I'll forgive that 45,000. 45, ah, wow, that's, that's pretty interesting carrot. So yeah, you gotta dangle the carrot. You gotta keep them moving. So, um, <laughs> that was that was one way we do it, but I, I'm always a fan of if I'm if I'm starting to go down loss mitigation, and they haven't made payments for a while, and they tell me they want to pay, I either need a big chunk of money up front, or I need them to do a, a forbearance agreement or trial period, where they make payments for six months or both. Is that is that something you made up? Um, no, I can't take credit for making it up. There's some of the stuff, um, I don't know many people that did it, but we would do the, where you create the second and agree to forgive it. Yeah, I, I don't know if we made it up. I just thought of it. It wasn't taught to me, but I'm sure somebody, somebody did that. There was another one that's pretty interesting that I love that I think is one of the most ninja things you've done is with the, uh, the FedEx packages. Yeah, yeah, that's that kind of falls or into an Amazon package. The, the Amazon. Bar, borrower outreach is uh, getting in touch with people. Um, is I have a plethora of Amazon packages that arrive at my house. Yeah. So sticking your loss mitigation package or your loss <laughs> mitigation hello, hey, we're going to work with you or we're going to take your house, you, you pick, putting that in an Amazon box and then slapping a FedEx label on there. I know it's going to get opened. <laughs> uh, it's a glitter bomb with the loss mitigation package. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, exactly. But no, you know, it gets their attention. And you have to do, you have to think outside the box to say, like, what can I do to get them? No, to at least get, I have to get them to engage. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So sorry to disrail. Uh, derail. Derail. And where were you then? I don't know. <laughs> Bravo. I don't know. You know, we're going to do a series on this. So I think... Um, First part of the series is going to be um, just introducing what this is, right? It, well, that's what this is. It's, but the first, the first series, our first video after this one will be um, let's look at diving into the strategy side. Maybe we kind of just did that a little bit, um, but really getting in there and figuring out what are all the options you have, right? And then we'll go with. Um, I'll probably do borrower um, reach out, mm -hmm. and that'll be. A fairly short one or different ways to reach out different companies you can use different ways to get in touch with the borrower whether it's FedEx packages Amazon door knocks stuff along those lines right and then from there it'll be data collection mm -hmm. and once we get data collection um, 
we need to, um, and somewhere in there, I guess before data collection, it'll be bar outreach. In there, I'm going to talk a little bit about getting the borrower on your side, <laughs> which is tough because that's something you need to do. You need to have that borrower wanting to work with you. You need to have that borrower feeling like, like, hey, they're willing to work. Right. Um, you know, bar outreach. Also, we're going to touch on: Are you doing it? Do you have a system you're using? Um, are you use, Is your servicer doing all of it? Right. What are you paying for that? What are the costs associated? What should you expect? Mm -hmm. So, and then it'll be data collection, all the documents you're going to want to get, um, and that'll be kind of tied into underwriting. Like, how are you going to underwrite this? What you're going to, What are you looking at? And then presenting, you know, kind of presenting the offer, the loan mod. Um, or, or your loss mitigation, you know, outcome. This is what you're going to want that borrower to sign. That's cool. Doing that, and then that's going to um, be a really cool series. And then getting and that I, document, getting all the documents. Um, there's another set of documents you got to get signed. You got to get them to sign on the line, which is dotted. That's the thing right. that's important. And then maybe we could even throw in some scenarios. So that'd be kind of cool. If you want to leave a comment below, just give us a crazy. You know, they're behind 11 years. House is worth this much. This is how much equity they have. You know, something like that would be kind of fun to see exactly how Rick would evaluate it. Mm -hmm. Right on the spot. Just, there you go. What do you think? I mean, that, that, that's how I like to learn. You know, like, sure, yeah. You know, and we can definitely go in that. And I can go into the archives and see what kind of um, loan mods we have in there that we've used, implemented with people. Um, you know, the hardest hit fund's not really around anymore. But that was... Uh, um, Actually, I think Kevin Shortell mentioned that they're rolling out another hardest hit fund type of something that actually came out, I want to say it's like three or four months ago. Really? Yeah, I have to get uh, Kevin Shortell on to uh, talk That'd about be that. We've been meeting to get him on here anyways. But yeah, there's a lot of different there's a lot of different ways to get there on loss mitigation. There's so many different things, and so we'll just kind of pick and show you the different routes that, that we've used. and. I'm sure there's a bunch of them out there that we're not going to talk about that people can say, well, this is what I've done, and we'd love to hear it. If you've got a loss mitigation strategy that you're like, hey, I've done this and used this in the past and it worked really well, do it, share it. Let's go ahead and help people out. And, you know, I like that. Yeah. This is going to be fun. Keep us busy. Yeah, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of these things. So we'll, um, I don't know, I don't know if that's going to be a full five videos or is it, we may release them more than one at a time. Well, it's gonna be like a kind of like a series of you know it's gonna be this own little little world you know kind of like the intro to note investing sort sure. of loss mitigation loss mitigation um, sessions and uh, we'll have that there for people that can still put it on the podcast but then also just view that whole series by itself mm -hmm. so it'll be good but yeah I guess for now I don't we don't want to take too much of your time we know you guys got things to do and I'm sure with all that knowledge that Rick just said your hand hurts you're still writing stuff down so. I'm sure uh, <laughs> you'll be ready for the next time we come back on. So well, I guess we'll see you next time, right? Take care.